Scanning through a fetus is always quite interesting. Amniotic fluid volume, maximum vertical pocket. Amniotic fluid accompanies the fetus in the amniotic sac. It functions as a cushion for fetus. Determine the amount of amniotic fluid around the baby. Check for opening or shortening of the cervix. Assess fetal growth. Monitor fetal development. Check for congenital disabilities, hereditary conditions, or abnormalities. Placenta placement, spine, umbilical cord. A fetal ultrasound can also show. If a woman is pregnant with multiple babies. The gestational age. The position of your placenta and the vessels in the umbilical cord will be examined. Problems with the placenta like placenta previa or placental abruption. Your baby is breech. This scan also checks your baby's heart rate and rhythm. You will most likely spot the fetus's head, nose, arms and legs. Unlike your first trimester ultrasound when the fetus looked like a tiny cluster of cells. A routine prenatal ultrasound can check for defects or other problems in the fetus. The following can be examined. Abdomen and stomach, arms, legs, and other. This is the type of image pregnant mothers may see on the ultrasound screen or that the technician may print. What is a normal ultrasound examination of the fetal limbs? Visualization of the fetal limbs is an important part of the comprehensive examination of the fetus and is best accomplished at the end of the first trimester, early in the second trimester, or at the fetal anatomy examination at 18 to 20 weeks. Fetal movements refer to the muscular movements of the developing baby inside the mother's womb. These may be either reflex movements or elicited in response to noise or touch. All fetal movements are not alike. At first the mother may feel fluttering movements, which later turn to stronger kicks, and then she notices the baby squirming, rolling or wriggling. There are also hiccup movements. Thus fetal movements are classified as weak, strong, rolling. Before nine weeks, all the limbs move together, as the nerves are still developing. The embryo arches its head and back. At nine weeks yawns and stretches are visible on ultrasound. At 10 weeks from fertilization, you may see the limbs moving separately and startle movements. At 11 weeks the baby can open its mouth and suck its fingers. By 12 weeks, it is possible to watch the baby swallowing amniotic fluid. By 13 weeks, the baby vigorously moves arms and legs in kicks and jabs and can also respond to skin touch. At the 14th-20th week, a great event called quickening occurs. This is the first perception of fetal movement by the mother. Usually felt around 18 to 20 weeks in first pregnancies, it can be as early as 14 weeks in later pregnancies, the increased sensitivity of the more relaxed abdominal muscles. From the 20th 36 weeks, all types of fetal movements are felt weak, strong and rolling movements. Tha baby moves all the joints and the spine, ensuring proper joint development. By 28 weeks, all babies show the startle reflex. Here the baby brings both arms and legs towards the chest. In the third trimester, the baby shows a bicycling movement of both feet, called stepping. This is important in helping to turn the baby upside down for a normal delivery. By this time, the movements are somewhat restricted by the confined space available to the now larger fetus. Fetal movements have their own time of day and sleep activity rhythm. The fetus is often most active between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. In the last month or so of pregnancy, the baby kicks most during light sleep. The mother usually feels fetal movements best when she is lying down on the left side or sitting with her feet up and concentrating on the movements. Low volume of amniotic fluid hinders free movement of the fetus. Obesity which leads to a thick abdominal wall. Anterior placenta, this is not valid after 28 weeks, which increases the thickness of the uterine wall at that point. Smoking. First pregnancy with tight abdominal muscles. Drugs such as alcohol, benzodiazepines, opioids including methadone which sedate both mother and fetus. Whenever the mother feels that the baby's movements are reduced, investigation is in order to ensure that the baby is well. More than 10 kicks in 2 hours is usually deemed normal. 
A single episode of decreased fetal activity is not significant in 70% of mothers. When there is acute fetal distress, often there is a sudden flurry of fetal activity, mostly weak movements. However, with chronic fetal distress, it has been shown that there is a significant reduction or cessation of fetal movements for at least 12 hours before the fetal heart stops. This is called the movement's alarm signal and indicates impending fetal death. Changes in fetal heart rate follow the movement's alarm signal within 1 to 4 days if fetal death does not occur before that. Factors associated with decreased fetal movements 1. Intrauterine growth retardation. 2. Fetal growth restriction or small for gestational age babies. 3. Poor placental function, placental insufficiency. 4. Regicid amniotic fluid. Oligohydramnios. 5. Impending preterm labor. 6. Fetomaternal hemorrhage. 7. Intrauterine infections. Fetal outcomes associated with decreased fetal movements are congenital anomalies, preterm birth, cerebral palsy, intellectual disability, low birth weight, hypoglycemia, fetal death. God bless you. Do well to subscribe, like, and share. Not forgetting to tap notification.